Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, January 5th, 2023, and today we are going to be taking a look at a new list from CNN releasing their top 10 Senate seats most likely to flip in the 2024 Senate elections. Now, coinciding, of course, with our presidential election, we have a number of momentous Senate races, ones that will determine the future of Congress and the future of both political parties as they navigate the next two years in Congress. Now, the top 10 Senate seats here is a bit of a stretch in terms of 10 Senate seats in particular that are going to be competitive. Our Senate map, as is, is quite lopsided in favor of the GOP, but it's hard to see how we have 10 seats here that are fundamentally competitive. Now, traditionally, we would find that some of these states that are currently characterized as blue and red might actually vote for the other side of the aisle. Now, more so on the blue side, I'm looking specifically specifically at states like Montana, Ohio, and West Virginia that easily make it into the top 10 category that we will be talking about quite intently. But what we are looking at in terms of this top 10 map is that as we get towards the end of it, it isn't necessarily as important to look at these states because they don't really matter to the extent that we think they do. Top 10 is a great way of labeling and discussing a lot of important states in this upcoming election. But to be quite honest with you, I don't even agree that there are 10 truly competitive states because many of them are de decided and were determined following the 2018 elections. The boring thing about American politics is that we rarely ever see any movement on the national map. Even when it comes down to our bare bones numbers, we can see that in the last presidential election, it nearly mimicked what we saw in 2016, with the exception of a few states, but the numbers were roughly the same. When you look at the House delegation from 2022 versus 2020, Again, the numbers are the exact same, just on opposite sides of the aisle. American politics isn't as wishy-washy as we like to think. Yes, different political parties end up in power, but generally speaking, the same states are competitive year after year after year. And that is the same case with our upcoming Senate map. But that isn't to say that there isn't value in ranking how competitive these races are going to be and labeling them in the top 10. So that's why I'm making this video, but I want us to take a little bit more time talking about the earlier on states rather than the ones in the very end. However, to make this a little bit more interesting, rather than just going ahead and talking about these in the sense of the most competitive to the least competitive, we'll start backwards uh, to start off with some of the states that really don't make much of a difference on our Senate map and probably won't be as competitive as we otherwise think. For a little bit more context, though, before we get right into Florida, which is our first state, this is where the generic congressional vote is nationwide for the 2024 election. Theoretically, it's good for Republicans. In practice, it's not. The 2022 midterm elections were a display that really shocked the Republican Party in saying that a lot of swing states weren't determined by how the national vote went. Republicans won by roughly three points nationwide, but that didn't translate to practically any swing state victories. And Republicans were astounded because for the first time in a long time, they won the national National popular vote, and the Republicans haven't won the popular vote in the presidential election since the 2004 presidential election, so they might be hoping that this election would amount to something different, especially now that Donald Trump is ahead by 2.2%. But again, the 2022 midterms proved that the popular vote is not everything the way that it used to be, especially for Republicans. So we'll keep that in mind as we navigate some of these states. Yes, the national numbers are good for Republicans, but there's also a good chance, too, that Democrats could end up defending many of the states that end up in the top three, top five, that are still important for 2024, but still, uh, you know, might not be as competitive as we otherwise think. So starting off in the state of Florida, a very Republican state, one that I would argue we know a lot about because of how competitive it has been over the past couple of years or past couple of election cycles, rather. But more recently, it is becoming a state that is a little bit more lopsided in favor of the GOP. For instance, in 2022, we saw that Marco Rubio won, as highlighted here by 16 points, and Ron DeSantis won by 20. And so it makes sense that this would be a state that would be, in theory, considered likely to flip, but in reality, not so much. And that's why it's ranked at number 10. We're really not going to see much enthusiasm around there for Democrats, but it's always interesting to think about. We move over to the next state, the state of Texas, one that Republicans won in the last time this Senate delegation was up in 2018 by just 2.8%. It was a very narrow election, it was a wake-up call to Republicans, and it put Texas on the radar for the National Democratic Party for the first time since 1976. However, it ranks in at just number 9 in terms of likely states to flip. It brings the Republican delegation down to 47, but the interesting thing about this is that this marks the last Republican seat that is on this top 10 map. 
which shows that the Republican Party at a bare minimum is expected to win 47 seats to the Democratic Party's potentially 51, with these two seats still competitive. But of course, eight remaining seats need to be labeled competitive. And you start to see why this map, I consistently refer to it as overwhelmingly lopsided in favor of the Republican Party. But to start, Florida and Texas join the ranks. The next state is the state of Michigan, which seems to be more competitive by this ranking than Texas and Florida, but still pretty safe for Democrats, something that I honestly agree with. Now, it might be surprising to you knowing that Debbie Stabenow, the incumbent Democratic senator from Michigan, is retiring. She's taking a step back from the United States Senate, and so everybody thought that maybe Michigan would be more competitive. Maybe John James, the Republican who came close to defeating her in 2018 and almost won the 2020 Senate race in Michigan, would run again. He decided he's staying in Congress. And so other Republicans threw their hat in the ring are starting to think about running, have announced that they're going to run, but no one who really strikes out as a top-tier candidate for this race. And so, the Republican Party, scrambling in their efforts, can't seem to solidify on who they're going to nominate. Maybe it will be a Republican who lost in 2022 because he was disqualified from the race, a Republican representative who hasn't been in Congress since 2015, or a primary Republican representative who was defeated for not being too Trump and voting, in many cases, against Donald Trump's interest and voting to get rid of different protections for the former president. So Michigan is a state where Republicans are in a complete state of disarray in the state party, which explains why this is ranked so low despite a prime opportunity in an otherwise competitive state in an open race that simply doesn't seem to be making marks for Republicans. The next state is the state of Wisconsin, a state where Democrats are hoping they hold on to it because of their strong incumbency status, a state that they probably will based on the ranking of this category. Now, it's still a state that Republicans are targeting and that CNN does believe is competitive, and I believe that it is competitive. But the extent that it is competitive is definitely contentious. I think some Republicans think Wisconsin might be a pickup if Donald Trump wins the state. I don't necessarily agree. Tammy Baldwin is a very popular Democrat who has outran margins, especially Hillary Clinton's, and even the margins put forth by President Obama in 2012, ones that I would say contend that she's on track for a strong victory in 2024. Exactly what this list seems to suggest as well. But it's still one that should be on our radar. Now, this one actually strikes me as quite surprising. Nevada is expected to be uh, a state that is less likely to flip than a lot of other ones that I would otherwise say would be higher up on this column. Most notably, the state of Pennsylvania, where Bob Casey, which we will talk about in just a moment, a very popular senator, a Democrat who has a long-lasting family legacy in the state, is on track for a re-election bid against Dave McCormick, who, quite frankly, is not the strongest GOP nominee that Republicans could put up. But in Nevada, Jackie Rosen seems to be really making headways with where she is across the state. It seems as if CNN has a lot of confidence in her and their analysts that do a lot of extensive research and data analysis behind it, and I honestly think that she has a good shot at victory, but I don't necessarily agree that it should be number six. Regardless, though, that's still somewhat good news for Democrats. Now, in the top five is where it gets a bit tricky. The top five are all Democratic or Democratic-aligned seats, which means Democrats are going to be playing a lot of defense. We start off strong with the state of Arizona, which I think is largely led in this likely to flip region because Kirsten Sinema, the incumbent independent senator who caucuses with the Democrats, ran as a Democrat in 2018, switched parties, might run for re-election alongside another Democrat, which means Democrats are thinking there might be some vote splitting going on in the state of Arizona. But Kirsten Sinema hasn't announced a re-election bid, and some are speculating that she might withdraw entirely from the United States Senate. Only time will tell, but that leads me to think why it's ranked number five. The state of Pennsylvania is ranked number four. Now, personally, I don't know if I agree with this at all. I think Bob Casey is a very strong candidate who has proven himself in election after election. Just looking at his 2018 election results, you start to see why you begin to be confident in somebody like Bob Casey. Debbie Stabenow only won by seven, and Tammy Baldwin by 11. He won by 13 in Pennsylvania. And yet, this is a state that seems to be ranked higher than Michigan, Wisconsin, and Nevada. Again, I don't entirely agree, but I do think it will be competitive. More competitive because they are running alongside the same ballot as Donald Trump. In 2012, Bob Casey had a narrower margin than where he was in 2018. That's because it was a presidential election year. 
The bad news here for Democrats is that the only thing that I could see backing this up is that in 2012, Obama won the state of Pennsylvania by roughly five points. And so Bob Casey only outran President Obama by roughly four, which means potentially if these results hold true and we see in some of these swing state polls that you have Donald Trump losing or sorry, Donald Trump winning by three points in Pennsylvania, maybe it could be a more competitive state. But I do think Bob Casey holds out strong as a popular senator. Now, Ohio is ranked as number three. And I think that this is that this absolutely makes sense. It should be ranked at number three, and that's why I personally would have it. Sherrod Brown is officially the first Democrat on our list here that is running in a state that Donald Trump won in both 2016 and 2020. And so Ohio is a state that Trump won by eight points both times, one that will be very competitive, but he's popular. And so he might be able to hold out strong, but very obviously he's in a likely to flip state. The next one being the state of Montana. This absolutely makes a lot of sense. Similar to Sherrod Brown, John Tester, the Democrat here, is running in a state that Donald Trump, of course, won in 16 and 20, but not by eight points like in Ohio, but by 20 and 16 points respectively from 2016 to 2020. So he's going to have to outrun President Trump by double digits. And the question is, will he be able to do that? Again, time will tell. The number one winner on this map here is the state of West Virginia. Now, this one, I think the GOP has already won. And my reason for that is that Democrats are defending seven out of the 10 seats here. Republicans are defending two out of the nine. But in West Virginia, you find that Democrats have nearly unilaterally disarmed, including the incumbent senator. Now, Michigan, of course, doesn't have an incumbent running, but I still think Democrats are hotly contesting this state. They are spending a lot of money and a lot of resources on Elisa Slotkin, on Hill Harper, on Democrats up across the ballot in congressional races across the state to bolster turnout. But in West Virginia, they seem to have entirely given up. And so now working in reverse order, that makes a lot of sense. I told you Trump won Ohio by eight. He won Montana by 16. Can you guess the margin he won by in West Virginia? 39 percentage points. 69 percent of the vote went to Donald Trump. Not a single county voted for Joe Biden. So how do you think that plays for Democrats when they look ahead to running alongside this same exact ballot? They know they're going to lose. Uh, You find here, too, that the one person who Republicans really wanted to run, who ended up running, was the incumbent Republican governor, Jim Justice, who did very well in his re-election bid in the state of West Virginia. We can see here, in fact, when we look at the full election results, that he wins across the state. Shelley Moore Capital won 70% of the vote. Jim Justice got 64% of the vote. The interesting thing about Jim Justice is that his first election was in 2016. Can you guess the party he ran under? It's not the one you're thinking. It's the Democratic Party. And he won by seven points. What happened? He became a Trump Republican and immediately was adored by the National Party. And so he was handed a Senate seat to defeat Joe Manchin. And he announced and Joe Manchin backed down. So West Virginia already going to the GOP. Moving over to Montana, it's reasonable to believe that John Tester also could lose. In Ohio, Republicans are starting to build back up their enthusiasm. Now, Bernie Moreno is not a strong candidate. I honestly don't think he's going to win. And I think that Sherrod Brown has a realistic shot at winning in Ohio because the Republican nominee is so bad. But not bad enough. Bernie Moreno could still win. But it isn't likely in my point of view. But when I say that, I mean roughly 40% chance. Still a very good shot at happening. I do think Democrats, though, for what it's worth, are going to win their states, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. Even if Biden loses them, they have popular incumbents or popular Democrats enough to outrun President Biden. I also think they're going to win in Nevada and Arizona. I think it makes sense. Arizona probably won't have Kirsten Sinema on the ballot, but even if they do, polling seems to suggest the Democrats still have a fighting chance. It also helps that people will start to trivialize Kirsten Sinema as a candidate. Even though she is the incumbent, people want to vote for a winning candidate. Someone who can win. She isn't that. She doesn't have any core base. Her core base abandoned her. She abandoned her core base. Whichever way you want to look at it, the Democratic Party is done with her. The Republican Party never liked her, but they do now because she's an independent, but they won't vote for her. And so now it's tricky. And so polls seem to suggest that she tops no more than 15% by the time you reach the general that will start to whittle down to more like 7 or 8% because, again, people don't want to vote for losing candidates. And then you start to see that the race sort of equalizes and Democrats can still pull out ahead. Jackie Rosen defeated a Republican incumbent in her first election, 2018, by five points. She's popular. She does well. She has done well in the House. She can win. She'll win. So I think Nevada, Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, states that the Democrats can win. 
For the remaining ones, though, it's a bit more up in the air. I do think Ohio very much is a state that is likely to flip, but not likely enough. Texas, however, Florida, however, I don't even think should have been mentioned on the list. I think maybe Colin Alred could pull out a surprise close margin, but he's not going to win. Florida is a lost cause for Democrats. Ohio is the one state where I really don't know what's going to happen. It'll be very interesting, though. These top 10 states really provide insight into what the pundits think is going to happen, what the pundits are hoping are going to happen, whatever, which way you want to see it. They obviously want to be right. That's why I say they're hoping for it, not necessarily from a partisan perspective. But you look at it and you look at this and say, wow, there's a lot of toss-up seats. But in reality, it's more like eight. And even more in reality, it's more like six. And so you look at them and you start to build out a picture. These Senate elections are going to be very important, very contentious, and a lot of it will be determined by what happens in the 2024 general election on the presidential map. Because these states are coinciding with it, it will determine nearly everything. And so these Senate races are going to be very, very competitive. A lot of seats to flip, a lot of seats to look at, a lot of seats to focus on. But in reality, a lot more in favor of the GOP than Democrats and something that will continue this uphill climb the Democrats will need to continue climbing if they want any chance at maintaining Senate control. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already. And check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch. And then a playlist for my 2024 election analysis videos, Senate election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you all tomorrow.